I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Go, go! Boy, for a group of superheroes as popular as the Fantastic Four are, Hollywood sure can find a good movie to build around them, can they? The first time they tried, the movie never got released. The second time they tried, well, we'll get to that in a sec. But now for the third and maybe final time, Chronicle director Josh Trank has released his take on the Fantastic Four. And the reviews for it are so bad that even its director is saying on Twitter that it is a piece of shit. Yeah. But it's hard for me to believe that there will be anything worse than the dynamic duo of garbage that are the two Fantastic Four movies from director Tim Story. And today we're looking at the 2007 sequel which prompted this franchise to get re-rebooted, Rise of the Silver Surfer. The first time I saw this one in the theater, I was convinced it was the worst superhero movie I'd ever seen. Worse than Batman and Robin. Yeah, I know. Strong words, right? But eight years have passed since then, so maybe if I rewatch this flick with a more mature viewpoint and keep things in hindsight, we may have our hands on an unacknowledged superhero classic. And its executive produced by the director of Pixels were fucked! Ah, crap. So seeing as this movie is called Fantastic Four, let us reintroduce ourselves to the Fantastic Four. The stretchy Mr. Fantastic played by Johan Griffith, the transparent invisible woman played by Jessica Alba, the rocky thing played by Michael Chiklis, and the flaming human torch played by Chris Evans. Ever since the first movie, these four have become far more used to their radiation-induced superpowers, so much so that Mr. Fantastic and the invisible woman are planning to finally get married, with no world-destroying chaos to get in the way this time. But a mysterious alien happens to arrive on Earth around this time, causing citywide blackouts and frozen over oceans. The army reaches out to Mr. Fantastic so he can apply his vast scientific knowledge in capturing this destructive alien, but he refuses. I'm afraid I can't. You see, I'm getting married this Saturday. I just don't have the time. Now that is a sign of a great superhero. Ignoring a threat to life as we know it because your whiny ass fiance wants to get married. Oh, and because you also have a bachelor party to attend, a scene which will go down in history as one of the most painful moments in the history of superhero movies. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'd rather be watching Spider-Man 3 right now. And what a shocker, their wedding gets crashed by the alien's arrival in New York City. This alien is none other than the Silver Surfer, who has gone throughout the galaxy destroying planet after planet, and Earth is next on his list. Johnny Storm tries to take him down, but easily gets defeated, and his exposure to the Surfer has now made his molecular structure unstable, meaning if any of the Fantastic Four touch him, they'll switch powers, leading to a series of downright goofy antics that confirms to us the makers of the first movie haven't learned dick and are fine with turning the sequel into a super-powered sitcom. You're on fire! You stink! But still, the movie tries to delve into more serious territory when the villainous Doctor Doom, played by Julian McMahon, escapes from captivity and is hired by the army to help the Fantastic Four defeat the Surfer. But as inconsistent as the tone is in this movie, there is one thing tying the whole flick together. The Fantastic Four being terrible at their job. They bicker and bitch and moan all the goddamn time when they should be out kicking ass and saving the world! What the hell is wrong with you people? Thank you, Andre Brower. Thank you. And it doesn't help that Johan Griffith and Jessica Alba just cannot cut it in the acting department. And seriously, Jessica Alba looks fuck damn weird with that blonde wig and those blue contacts. You are a dark complexion Mexican, not a light white American. Whoa, they look freaky as shit. The only two holding this shit up are Michael Chiklis and Chris Evans, who deliver pretty solid performances. Sure, one character's a douchebag and the other looks like foam rubber dog vomit, but compared to Captain Bland and Wendy Weiner, they come off looking great. And you could tell these two would land roles in far better superhero properties in their future. And Doug Jones does what he can with the Silver Surfer. He looks amazing in the part. But considering his backstory lasts all of two minutes and he's dubbed over by Lawrence Fishburne for no good reason, all that you know is at an end. He doesn't do enough to save this movie. And did I mention they turned Galactus into a fart in this movie? Oh, I didn't? Okay then, they turned Galactus into a fart in this movie. And on top of this shit Sunday is the fact it's rated PG. 
Now, don't get me wrong, I'm down for a more lighthearted superhero movie for kids when it's called The Incredibles. But this shit is just emblematic of the worst attitude Hollywood takes towards superhero movies. They're based on comic books! They're strictly for kids! Well, they're not. So you can shove that argument back up your ass where it belongs and take this movie with you. So is it worse than Batman and Robin? Well, I won't dare dignify this movie with such a distinction, but it is up there. But if people are to be believed, this is at least a better Fantastic Four flick than the one which is in theaters now. Man, 20th Century Fox, three times to get this franchise right and you fucked them all up. I just have to ask you guys, what the hell is wrong with you people? It's clobberin' time! By that I mean, it's time to clobber down several glasses of your booze of choice so you can play the awfully good drinking game! Take a shot or drink every time they deliver some techno-babble exposition bullshit we don't care about. It seems to radiate cosmic energy when- I've been cross-referencing the surface radiation. You have to get to the board and lead it away from here before it's too late. So what you're really saying is- Blah, blah, blah. Proper name, place name, backstory stuff. Ah, gotcha. Duly noted. They mentioned the Silver Surfer's board. His board? Like a surfboard type thing. You're bored? Yep, that's pretty much the one word to describe how this movie makes me feel. Bored! Johnny Storm touches someone and switches their powers around. And a bunch of hijinks hap- Wait a minute. Is Chris Evans wearing thing hands? <laughs> Holy shit. Really, movie? Really? And take a double shot when Stan Lee, of course, makes a cameo appearance. Name? Stan Lee. Yeah, uh, nice try, buddy. No, nice no, try. really, uh, nice I'm try. Stan Lee. Yeah. The same Stan Lee who was behind Stripperella in that cancelled Arnold Schwarzenegger cartoon? Oh, I, uh, uh, hey, look, it's Batman! Where? Hey, uh. And on the duty watch, with this flick being rated PG and Jessica Alba playing a character named the Invisible Woman, I think you could tell any semblance of boobs in this flick is covered up by a strategically placed lake. <laughs> Why does this always happen to me? Well, Jessica, because of all the cast members we would have wanted to see naked in this movie, nobody wanted Michael Chiklis to show us his dick. Liss. On the enjoyableness continuum scale from Boulder Bruce, Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, wipes out in the sea of superhero movies and hangs three out of ten. If only there was an image that could illustrate how this movie made me feel. Yeah, that seems about right. I'm Jesse Shee for JoeBlow.com, and as much as this new Fantastic Four is getting slammed by critics, don't you worry. Surely it'll have had a big opening at the box office and saved this franchise from going extinct? Ah, crap. Joe Blow, he sure likes to drink a lot. And Joe Blow watches his movie like the hero man. Joe Blow, he's not Hey everyone, Jesse Shade here from Awfully Good Movies. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see me take on more good bad movies, Click on any of the links you see here, or subscribe to see this show alongside all the great content that we offer here at JoeBlow.com. And remember, I love you. Uh, wait, that sounded wrong. But I do love you, though.